Hey guys, how y'all doing? This is Paul with uh, right here on Healing Journeys and uh, glad to be with you guys. Excited for what the Lord's gonna, gonna say. Um, you know, I pray that it blesses you guys and truth, this truth sets you guys free um, and just stirs you up and encourages you to love Jesus and go after people and uh, see his kingdom reign here on earth. Um, that's the whole point of all of this. All these videos that you watch, it's, it's so truth can set you free so you can go set others free. And um, that's what we want. Be fruitful and multiply. We want to grow in the kingdom of heaven. Uh, we want to know how, honestly, to live free and have fellowship ourselves. And then we want to know how to, how to love people really well. Um, and so, yeah, um, I think ta last time we talked about... Um, you know, just believing, just straight out believing this thing, being so simple minded, just what your Bible says, man, just believe it, just go after, just do it. He says, Mark 16, verse 17, I think we kind of talked about is, uh, you know, believers will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. Um, and then there's no ifs, ands or buts. It's just believers lay hands on the sick, the sick recover. Why? Because when believers lay hands, the kingdom of God goes through them into whatever vessel and the kingdom takes over and it crushes and it destroys sicknesses and disease and devils and it gives life and life abundantly and that's what we have so then it really comes back to the individual with the kingdom believing that it's in them it's the mystery that's been revealed christ in you the hope of glory um so yeah hopefully we'll just kind of fan the flame on that this afternoon and um i think we'll talk about healing this is the last one um the last little meeting slash video that that we'll be doing with me um so yeah i feel like there's a lot to say but we'll just uh we'll see what happens because i have no idea what's gonna happen but let me just pray real quick uh father i just thank you for your presence I just thank you for your body, Lord, and your blood. I thank you. You made a way when there was no way. You are the way. Um, we don't want any other ways. We want truth, Jesus. We want to be set free. We want to fall in love with you. We want to, we want to know what real fellowship is. We want to know, Lord, we want to suffer for your name's sake. Um, we just honor you. We love you. Holy Spirit, just reveal scripture to us this afternoon. And just draw us into the Father even more. Give us wisdom, Lord. In Jesus' name. Alrighty, so um, I kind of wanted to go into Matthew 17. I think I never got there last time. I, we almost got there and then something happened. But um, yeah, over in Matthew 17, it's the only example Jesus gives. Only one. As to why someone wasn't healed um and i mean that's like the main question is you know we believe in healing we know the promises but we just come back with the question well why am i not healed what am i doing wrong um whether it's the person receiving or the person praying um i'm gonna be honest with you guys i mean i i never put it on the person receiving prayer to have faith never um, to me, that just doesn't make sense. And I think to the Bible, it doesn't make sense either. Um, Jesus acknowledges other men's faith. Why? Only to encourage and, and stir up the fact that, hey, this thing's simple. Your faith did it. This is good. He's training them up. Hey, your faith has made you well. Oh my gosh, what faith? That you just believed. That's what Jesus is doing when he's acknowledging other men's faith. And we get into the place of praying and then we don't see it happen. And honestly, because we're a little maybe insecure and we don't understand, we say, hey, if you would just get some more faith or, hey, you go do this because you and the Lord. And no, it's the responsibility of the person praying to lay hands on the sick and the sick recover. It doesn't have to do with the sick. And now I'm not good. Like, it's OK to get people that are sick in a place of fellowship and and understand that they can have it on their own and all that stuff and grow them up. But when they're sick, isn't the time to to do that? It's time to get them healed. And and then you disciple them up. Um, yeah, so that, I know that's a huge thing. But James 5, I think four, 
maybe 14, it talks about if someone's sick, let them call for the elders of the church and let the elders of the, of the church anoint them with oil, praying the prayer of faith. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. The sick has nothing to do with it. It's the elders praying the prayer of faith that saves the sick and the Lord raises him up. Um, so let's just not do that. Let's not blame the people we're praying for, for why it's not happening. Honestly, let's just take responsibility as a son of God, a daughter of God that is called to release the power. And we don't get condemned by that. But at the end of the day, we're growing up into him. So if we're not seeing everything we're praying, we're not condemned asking questions. It's just like, man, Lord, I want to grow up into you. I want to know you more. I want to release the kingdom of heaven like I know it's possible. I saw it in the word and you said, follow me. You healed every person. I thank you. I can get every person healed with you, Lord, because your word is truth. And that leads you into fellowship not discouragement and condemnation and you keep on praying you keep believing and you don't get hung up on what hasn't happened you get caught up in what can happen um, that's the whole point of fellowship that's why it's so important to know him not just know all his promises but to know him intimately know him get alone with him like we've talked about so much it's so important um, but yeah, Matthew Matthew 17 really nails it in the head um, because the truth is, you know, we've prayed for a lot of people, all of us, everyone listening. We've prayed for someone and maybe they weren't healed um, and we get stumped by that. It becomes like a stumbling block. Healing becomes a stumbling block. It's And it's supposed to be a blessing and, and a promise and, and inside of a covenant and it's supposed to be amazing and we've made it a stumbling block and all of a sudden, we don't see someone healed. So, or the individual, you know, let's say you're just believing for something and it hasn't moved. Um, I mean, the answer's in the word, guys. And that's not like, it's not harsh. It's just, we have to get to know him. Like, because his word is truth and truth sets you free. Not what you think you're going through or think you've experienced. What we do is we don't see it. And then we read a book on 30 reasons why you're not healed. When you have one book on one reason why you can be healed. I mean, the book grows. It's 30, 33 reasons, 35, 40 reasons why you're not healed. And we read that because we sympathize and we say, well, I'm not healed and I believe. So let me read this book on why I'm not healed. And then all of a sudden it turns into a method and you're reading a book to try and get a promise instead of falling in love with Jesus and receive what he paid for do you see the difference? It's so important. We have to love Jesus and through that fellowship and co-union and you walk in the light as he's in the light. Guess what? There's no darkness, sickness, disease, pains, all that stuff is under the category of darkness. But when you walk in the light as he's in the light and you fellowship with him, darkness has no place. But if you don't see something happen and you go read a man-made book on why you're not healed, you'll get caught up and everything that's on your mind is why you're not healed. But the gospel is why you can be healed, not why you can't and why this hasn't happened and what you're doing wrong. The gospel is what's been done, what you can have and now just believe. Don't say in your heart, well, I've tried that. If you say I've tried that, you've never even tasted. You've never even tried it because you don't say I've tried that in the gospel. It's a way you live. It's a way you're willing to die by. It's not just a you're not test driving a car, guys. We're, we're not playing a game. This gospel's real and faith is real and you either want to live and die by it or you don't want it at all. The just shall live by faith, not dabble their toes in and jump in and out of. No, the just, the justified, those made just as if they never sinned, will live their entire life by faith. And we've just diminished faith into a little tool in our belt that we try and get to unlock a promise instead of perspective that we literally live our life by. So when something comes up, if something comes up, we're not scrambling to try and get the tool to, to get a promise. No, we're just in covenant. We're already in faith. The moment we try and keep trying to get in faith, we're probably missing faith because faith is natural for the believer. Faith is natural for the believer. It's not unnatural. So we need to kind of take a step back and Stop trying to get in faith and just believe we're in faith. Faith is faith. It's just believing. It's believing the unseen. Faith is, watch, faith is the substance, evidence, tangibility of things hoped for. The evidence of things not yet seen or not seen. Faith 
is literally the substance of what you desire. Faith itself. So having faith is simply believing apart from what you see. And that faith actually grips what you want, what you desire. And by faith, the elders obtained a good testimony. You keep on reading through Hebrews 11. That's what I'm, Hebrews 11, 1 is what I, and 2 is what I just quoted. If you keep on reading, the amazing testimonies of men in faith. They just lived in faith in the old covenant. In the old covenant, they lived in this faith and they obtained a good testimony. You want a good testimony before the Lord. You want a good testimony. You want to live in faith. You keep on reading and it's amazing. They, man, the Lord delivered them. They escaped the mouth of lions, quenched fire. They did all these amazing. You just flip the page and all of a sudden they were tortured. They were beaten. They were sawn in two. They were stoned. They were killed. All this stuff. And it says in faith. We think if we suffer like that and go through that, that uh, am I not in faith? What's going on? God, what are you doing? I thought I believed. What, I mean, now I'm suffering and being persecuted and all this stuff's happening to me. What's going on? No, live or die. Live or die, we're in faith. What does that mean? We believe Jesus is the Christ. We believe Jesus is the Son of God. We live in faith that he freed me from all my sin and now I'm in fellowship with the Father. And come hell or high water, guess what? We're the same. Why? Because we're in faith. Faith doesn't move. Faith, watch, faith doesn't wear a watch. That's the biggest thing. Faith doesn't have a watch on it. I was talking to someone and we were talking about faith. And, and faith seems to be an issue to be consistent in for the for just the body of Christ. We, we seem to like run into faith. Faith is just, am I having enough? I mean, it's just a mustard seed. What's going on? And faith, think about it. Faith wouldn't be an issue if time wasn't an issue. So if there was no time, so if you couldn't tell it's been five minutes or five days or five years, you would just willingly, love, lovingly just live in faith. But faith seems to stumble us because we wear a watch and it doesn't happen as fast or whatever as we want. And so we're looking at the watch. Well, why isn't it working? Why isn't it working? Since when does faith have to do with time? Faith is a belief. And your belief determines time. That's like super deep. I don't know if we just got that, but take the watch off. Here's the point of what I'm saying. Take the watch off concerning faith. Whether it's a promise you're believing for or, or whatever, man, just take the watch off and be like, you know what? I'm done with watching the time. I love you, Jesus. I believe your promises are true, but even more so, I believe you raised from the dead and you made a way to fellowship with you. And I want to fall in love with you and learn how to live in you every day. I want to walk with you. I want to say what you say. I want to hear what you're hearing. I want to do what you do, Lord, more than just all about me. I want to make it about you and I want to love people. Teach me how to fellowship, Lord. Teach me how to love you. And all of a sudden you're getting caught up into this place of fellowship and love. And, and all of a sudden the watch is gone and your body's healed. I can't tell you how many times that's happened, guys. It's just through fellowship and communion, co-union with the Lord. The two living as one. That bodies are just healed. Your body, your own personal body is healed. And you get your eyes off of you and you get it on him. And um, so Matthew 17, we'll get there. All right, we'll go ahead and flip there right now. Matthew 17. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Matthew 9, this just popped up in my heart. It's kind of what we're saying here. In Matthew 9, I'm pretty sure we're pretty familiar with, with this passage here. Um, but it talks about Matthew 9. I'll just read it in verse 1. It says, So he got into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own city. Then behold, they brought to him a paralytic laying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. And at once, some of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say. You see that? You should circle the word easier. Which is easier to say. Your sins are forgiven you. Or to say, arise and walk. You know what we've done? It's easy to say your sins are forgiven. 
but it's not so easy to say rise up and walk. Come on, let's be real. Our lives will reveal that. If, if we think it's 10 times easier for a man that wants to for a man that wants to be saved who run down to the altar give his life or you're just out out in public whatever man just man let's follow Jesus get water baptized and he wants to if you think that's easy but then you look at a man and his legs don't work and you think that's more difficult then we're not understanding true righteousness now that's that's a challenging thought it challenges me big time i want to see i want to see a deaf person, a blind person, I want to see a maimed, someone without limbs. I want to see that and see it just as easy as a man who wants to get saved. Because Jesus says, which is easier? Your sins are forgiven or rise up and walk. That's righteousness. See, it, it's not about healing, guys. It's not about healing. It's not even about this is the springboard, but it's not about it. The forgiveness of sins. It's about righteousness. It is about the revelation of righteousness. Men being made totally right by God. And now that we are right, which is easier? Now watch. He says, verse 6. But that you may know that the Son of Man, Son of Man, has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he says to the paralytic, rise take your bed and go to your house and he arose and departed to his house now when the multitude saw it they marveled and glorified god who had given such power watch not to god such power to men why is he emphasizing son of man and power has been given to men because he wants you to know it's possible for you he wants you to know you can follow him that if it's all god then it's cool and he's a superhero but if it's a man then you can follow him and you can do what he did and say what he said. And so which is easier? And so he's, he reveals by healing the man that he can forgive. That's amazing. That's amazing. He healed the man, the paralytic. He healed him to reveal that he could forgive their sins. Because in the eyes of, in the eyes of Jesus, healing and the forgiveness of sins are the same. It's the same word, guys. It's it's sozo. Literally, the word saved or salvation is salterius. The same word, same, or two different words, same meaning. Saved, healed, delivered, protected, preserved, kept safe and sound, and made whole. That's sozo. That's salvation. That's what we have uh, from Jesus. And that's what we can give. And so, we need to... Honestly, we just need to like know this word. His word reveals uh, his will, um, who he is, his nature, all those things. But we need to understand righteousness. Because which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven or to rise up and walk? And they're the same. The only thing that moves us is what we see. We see a man who can't walk. We see a man who can't hear. We see a cancer that's been in there. We've seen a, a disease that's incurable. And then we see a man who wants to be saved. And we'll naturally go towards this because all you have to do is, hey, you know, say some prayer and boom, boom, boom. And then you got to really seem like you got a belief here. But what if it was the same? It's not what if. It is the same in the eyes of Jesus. Jesus went about teaching and doing, preaching and and healing you can't get around it anywhere through jesus's life through the apostles life through the book of acts it's they're teaching they're proclaiming they're healing or they're healing signs and wonders miracles and they're preaching it's twofold we we have to do both we have to believe both and we have to believe it's the same that they're hand in hand and the lord will confirm the words spoken by signs and wonders and that's like I know sometimes we hear that and you preach and then you think the Lord's just going to drop something and everyone's going to be healed and man, that's happened and it's amazing, but he's looking for you to just step out and believe. And all guys, honestly, I just felt like I heard something in my heart. Well, how am I supposed to do that when I'm struggling with something still? If I'm still sick or if I'm still having an issue, how am I going to pray for someone that's hypocritical? But it couldn't be more, more far away from a hypocrite. 
When you pray for someone and you're struggling with something, it, it literally means you're standing on truth and you don't believe what you're going through to be reality because you're releasing the reality you believe in. So when someone's sick, dying, sick, can't walk, can't hear, blind, whatever it is, and you pray, but you're struggling with something, it might be the same thing you're praying for. All the more, man, pray. Pray for people. If you're having knee issues, go pray for someone with a knee issue. What are you doing? You're telling the devil and you're telling your body, I don't believe what I'm experiencing lines up with truth and I'm gonna release truth through my body and bless someone else because it's not about me. And I thank you all for my body up as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. And I'm not conformed to the world and what I see, but I'm transformed by the word of God. And guess what? Then I'll prove the good, acceptable, perfect will of God. That's Romans 12, 1 through 2. That's what we want, to offer our bodies up. So if you're struggling with something, if you're struggling with a sickness or whatever, man, pray for the sick. You're not a hypocrite. You're not a hypocrite if you do that. You're a son, you're a daughter, and you're saying, I don't believe this to be true in my body. So I'm going to reveal the truth through my body. I'm going to pray for the sick, and I'm going to see him healed. Well, you're not healed. What's it matter? Jesus is king. He'll heal me. It's not a big deal. I love Jesus. He loves me. I love people and I believe in healing. I believe in righteousness and this thing won't stay in my body. But guess what? That won't, that, I'm trying to word it really well. But if we don't know him, like we say we do, if we don't know him, I'm talking knowing him, guys, then you may start up start off like that and, and, and you're encouraged, but then two days later, you're discouraged. Or five days later. And you're thinking, man, when is this thing gonna budge? I don't know how long I can keep this up. We don't want that. Um, we wanna know him and be consistent and, and have longevity. We wanna be faithful, not faithless. Faithful, not faithless. One comes from knowing him, really knowing him and not being moved by what we see but being moved by what we believe. Huge difference. We can't afford to be moved by what we see. We have to be moved by what we believe. That's faith. Faith stands on the unseen to make the unseen, or to make the seen the unseen. So faith literally builds itself on what they're not seeing. So we can't afford to let our faith be determined by what we see. No, that's backwards. That's doubt. That's unbelief. Thomas said, unless I see and touch Jesus, I will not believe. Jesus rebuked him for it and said, blessed are those who do not see yet believe. So faith is on the opposite side. Faith believes before he sees. Because if he sees, he wouldn't need faith. The moment you're healed, you don't need faith. Why? Because you have the thing you are desired. You have the thing you ask for. Faith is for the unseen. Watch. So Faith is from when you pray to when you see. You see this gap? From when you pray in Jesus' name to when you see it manifest. This gap is called faith. This gap is where we have the most questions. Wonder why it didn't happen. What's going on? What am I doing wrong? I guess I don't know him like I thought I knew him. And we ask all this. And then faith is nowhere to be found. We prayed in faith, but we were faithless because that watch is on our wrist. And I'm encouraging you, take the watch off. Let's not get so concerned and caught up. I understand there's some, some serious sicknesses and diseases out there. And I know a lot of them are tagged on the end with death. I know cancer is real big and, and it scares a lot of people. Don't let fear, don't let fear control your faith. Don't let fear control your faith. Faith wins, fear loses. Live or die, we have faith. Don't let the end of a sickness called death provoke you to even pray. What's the difference from a back pain and cancer? There is none. The motive can be different. We get a, a call that we have cancer or something in, cancer or something incurable or something that ends with death and we get scared and, oh man, we need to pray. And now we're praying from a place of fear of dying instead of praying because it's not the kingdom of heaven. Back pain, man, that's not God. In Jesus' name, we command back pain to go right now in Jesus' name. And I'm praying from a, from a, a place of, I know him, I know his will, that's not heaven, and he loves him a lot and paid a high price. Let's get that back pain gone. 
we get a bad report for something, maybe something that's ma major in the world, and our heart starts beating, oh my gosh, let's pray, let's get a couple people, we need to see this because I don't want Sally, I don't want her to die, I don't want, a f and all of a sudden it, our prayer is motivated by fear instead of faith in the price he paid. I'm hoping you guys are seeing that difference there. And so if you, this is how you work with getting a response like that. If you get a report from a friend or even for yourself and it seems like it's a high-end type of thing, it, it's cancer, it's, it's, you know, whatever. There's so many different things out there. Whatever it is, if you feel that fear and your heart starts beating, it's like, oh my gosh, I need to be healed. Man, just draw into fellowship right there. Just cut it off. Cut those thoughts off. Father, I thank you. I'm a son. I'm a daughter of God that I'm never going to die. I thank you that on the earth I manifest Jesus and then after this, I'll meet Jesus. I thank you I can never lose and that fear will not run my life. I thank you my body is a temple of the Holy Ghost and you're building me up into the temple of God and Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit dwells inside of me. I thank you I'm full of light and there's no darkness inside of me. I thank you that report isn't the report. There's a way, but he's the way. Father, I thank you that you sent the Son and saved me. Father, bring me into a place of faith and just love and rest. I just want to love you and I don't want to be moved by what I see or what I hear. I want to be moved by the Spirit. I want to, I want to know what your word says. And all of a sudden, that fellowship right that just brings you back into who you are, what you were destined for, and, and true language with the Father. And now you're in rest and it's, you know what, I curse this cancer in Jesus name. And now you're praying from a place of knowing him and you're not in fear. And so it's not, it's not sin. It's not bad to receive those things, to hear them in your head. But just because you hear them in your head doesn't mean it's what you believe. You believe what's in your heart, not what goes through your head. Many people have thoughts and uh, the enemy attacks through the soul and tries to deceive and convince and lie. And a lot of people get deceived and think because they're thinking it that it's them. Just because it runs through your head does not mean it's you at all. We're supposed to take every thought into submission, into obedience of Christ. So that means every thought isn't ours. It says a stranger's voice in Matthew 10, what? Uh, Luke 10, talking about I am the door, talking about the sheep, hearing my voice. Oh, is it is it John 10? Anyways, uh, y'all know what I'm talking about. Is my sheep hear my voice and a stranger's voice, they will not follow. It doesn't say they will not hear. It says they will not follow. So just because you're hearing other things doesn't mean it's who you are. And so, I, you know, I pray right there. That simple truth sets you guys free. Just because it goes through your head doesn't mean doesn't mean it's who you are. And where we get stumped and a little confused is we don't we don't really know this word. And I'm talking about the life of Jesus specifically in the New Testament, the red letters. Jesus is the express image of the Father. He's the exact nature of God. He's the exact imprint of his nature. He only did what he saw the Father do. He only said what he heard the Father say, right? So Jesus is the Father revealed. Jesus is the will of God. So if Jesus did it, if Jesus said it, then it's the will of God. And he doesn't change. He doesn't shift. There's no turning of shadow. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if Jesus did it, it's continually and always the will of God. And it's settled. So we have to know his will. We have to know the father's will through the son, through the son. So then we can stand on those truths. We can believe those things. So when we hear a lie, we know the truth. It's so important to fill yourself with this word and just fall in love with Jesus. Um, because then when you hear all these other voices, you can submit them to Christ because you know Christ. A lot of times we get deceived because we don't know the we don't know his word um so we're well, we're just open to be deceived and so give no place to the devil just fall in love with jesus study jesus now's the time to press in to the word and know the truth know the truth not what every preacher says guys not even what i'm saying not what everyone else on this healing journeys is saying it should all push you back to knowing him and if jesus didn't say it then don't believe it if if your theology, if your doctrine doesn't fit through the needle of the person of Jesus in these red letters, then don't believe it. Jesus is the will of God revealed. He's truth that sets you free and whom the Son sets free. Listen to that. Whom the Son sets free. Not a man, the Son. Whom the Son sets free is free 
indeed. He is surely free who the Son has set free. All right, we're going to get to Matthew 17 right now. Because which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven or rise up and walk? They're the same because of righteousness and what he paid for. And that's what we can live in. We can have those eyes, guys. The more we get to know him, the more we get to know his word, it will become, I see no difference. Jesus is king in both. Kingdom of heaven reigns in both. And then we manifest the will of God. Matthew 17, one reason why men aren't healed. One reason why men aren't healed. Throw away the, um, throw away the books on 30 reasons why you're not healed. It is not helping you. It's stumbling you. And it's only bringing to the forefront of your mind why you're not, which brings you automatically into works and living under the law. And there, here's a good barometer. If you're discouraged, confused, and asking tons of questions about your healing, then you're under the law, not grace. Grace is rest, freedom, and joy. The law, I can't get it. What am I doing wrong? someone show me it's the law it's living under the law it's it's doing the things you don't want to do and the things you want to do you don't do it's it's this like tormented place in the soul and so grace it's like my buddy jared i think i talked about this one of the first or second times if you're not enjoying the christian life you're in the law you can't enjoy something you can't fulfill you can't enjoy something you can't actually walk in and when you walk in grace then you can live in faith and enjoy everything that's going on all right we're getting here matthew 17 verse 14 let's see we're good on time verse 14 and when they had come when they had come to the multitude a man came to him jesus kneeling down to him saying lord have mercy on my son for he is an epileptic and suffers severely for he often falls into the fire and often into the water so i brought him to your disciples watch so i brought him to your disciples but they could not cure him oh i love this passage then jesus answered who's experienced that there's a man who believes in jesus has a son has a, or whatever it is doesn't even have to be a son individual whatever he's believing in jesus so he comes to the believers or the disciples that's you and me and we pray because we're believing we've seen it but he's not healed. And so the man has the right to say, if he were to stand, I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't cure him. Man, it's so amazing. Verse 17, watch. Then Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. Oh, faithless and perverse generation. He's not talking to the man because it's not on the man. The man brought the boy. Obviously, he had faith. He brought him to the disciples. It's like, hey, I've seen these disciples be casting out demons and healing people. My boy's got a demon and he's having epilepsy and it's severe. So I'm going to bring him to his disciples and they'll get him healed. The disciples are thinking too, man, we got authority in Matthew 10 to go cast out demons. It's Matthew 17. We've been doing it for a while now. We've seen demons come out. Yeah, we'll pray for your son. Jesus is up on the mountain with Peter, James, and John. We'll get the job done. He gave us authority. That's all right. It's all good. And he said, oh, faithless and perverse generation. Faithless, you study these words out, it's amazing. Oh, faithless and perverse generation. Faithless means it's, fa it's you have faith, but it falls short or it falls down when pressure is applied. It's amazing definition, faithless. They had faith, but it was just less. When pressure came, it fell down. Like the seed that fell on stony ground and it sprang up quickly, but when persecution or the heat of the day came it withered away because it had no root in it um, into the ground and so faithless is they had faith because they were praying for the boy and the boy manifested shaken foaming at the mouth all that stuff and then their faith their faith fell short because they weren't seeing exactly what they were believing so they were faithless and perverse generation just means twisted thinking it's not full truth it's just off it's it's not totally right now watch how long shall i be with you how long shall i bear with you bring him here to me. all he's saying is guys you got to get this i'm not gonna be here and you got to get this how long shall i bear with you come on guys i commanded you to do this stand firm in the faith no truth truth will set you free and you'll see this thing move because i won't be here i'm gonna go and be with the father and actually let me read this and then i'll say what i'm gonna say 
And Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. Okay, so he brought the boy, the disciples prayed. Was he healed when the disciples prayed? The answer is no. Was he healed when the disciples prayed? No. Was he healed when Jesus prayed? Yes. <laughs> Was he healed when Jesus prayed? Yes. But what about the disciples? Well, no. So they prayed and it didn't happen. Right. It, it didn't happen when the disciples prayed. So does us praying and not seeing something determine the will of God? Absolutely not. Because these guys prayed and it didn't happen. But then Jesus came the will of God revealed and healed the boy. What's he saying? You didn't see something happen, outcome, reveal the will of God, and now they have a place to grow. They didn't see someone healed, but it was the will of God for the boy to be healed, but they didn't see him healed. How do I know it was the will of God? Because Jesus, the will of God, came and healed him. Well, that was Jesus. No, that was the fullness of love. And he said, follow me. Don't exalt him so high that you can't follow him. Jesus is king. There is no one greater, no one higher but you can follow him. Man, that's amazing. So we should probably stop coming up with excuses as to why men aren't healed when we pray and just believe, you know what? If Jesus walked in the room night, right now and touched the person, they'd be healed. That's the will of God. That's the revelation. That's the faith. And then you stand in that faith. Father, I thank you. You're in me. That when I pray, you pray. And I know if you walked in the room, they'd be healed. Father, I thank you. I'm growing up into you. I want to see like you see. I want to do what you do. And I know what's possible. I'm going to keep believing. I'm not going to be moved by what I see. Father, give me mercy. And I want to see signs and wonders spring forth from my hands, God. Because of Christ in me, the hope of glory. We need to reveal the will of God now more than ever. And so if we pray and don't see something happen, don't for a second start making excuses about the will of God or it's not their time or I know people they say like the Lord told me I'll be healed this year and they're not healed but they'll be healed this year that doesn't line up with the Bible because if Jesus is in them and Jesus is the will of God revealed they can be healed now oh man so don't let what you don't see determine the will of God because it's revealed right here this is it guys this is the only biblical example as when you pray for a person why they're not healed and we'll keep explaining but Jesus came down and revealed the will of God and healed the boy. Okay, verse 19. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, that's a good thing. If you're not seeing something or you have some questions, it's really good to go to Jesus privately. Don't look up on the internet. Don't ask every preacher you've ever known. Don't, man, just get alone with him in that secret place and ask him privately just like the disciples. And they said, why could we not cast it out? Good question. That's like a solid question. They prayed. They've seen demons go. They prayed. He's manifesting. And they're like, oh man, it's not working. What's going on? Jesus comes down, cast him out. When Jesus cast him out, he also manifest and foamed at the mouth. And then he laid there as dead and the Lord raised him up. He wasn't dead. He just laid there as dead. But Jesus wasn't moved by what he was seeing. He's moved by truth. He's moved by the Father. He's moved by what he believes more than what he's seeing. Because faith is that substance of things hoped for. All right, so they say, why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. Study the word out, unbelief. It's what you're failing to see. And it, and it goes hand in hand. It's what you're failing to see because of what you're seeing. That's amazing. So why could we not cast it out? because of your unbelief. Is that harsh? Is that mean? Is that condemning? No, it's sobering. We don't want unbelief, guys. He says, because of your unbelief, watch, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, be from, or move from here to there, and it will move. And this is so absolute. And nothing, and no thing, will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. What's he talking about? The demon or unbelief? Guys, we're way past talking about the demon. They said, why could we not cast it out? Why could we not cast the demon out? Because of your unbelief. Hey, 
you had unbelief. If you have faith as a mustard seed, you'll say to the mountain move. However, this kind of what? Unbelief. We're done with the demon. This kind of unbelief comes out of your life through a place of fasting and prayer. It's not works. All fasting is, is, is literally shutting the outside word, world out and what sustains you, food. And what makes everything so real, so tangible, it's, it's the worldly substance, cutting it off, drawing into fellowship with the Father. So what he's saying is through knowing Jesus more and seeing Jesus, understanding Jesus and knowing him more, unbelief will leave your life. So being moved by what you see or what you're failing to see is cut out of your life the more you draw into him through avenues, prayer and fasting, communion and just withdrawing yourself from the world and the sense of food and what sustains you. And then all of a sudden, when food's not sustaining you, he's sustaining you and he becomes more real. Does that make sense? And so through a place of communion, prayer and fasting, that type of unbelief is ripped out of your life. And, and honestly, I've seen this in, even in my personal life. I know on fast and on certain fast and just fellowship with him, fellowship's huge. Prayer, that prayer is so big. Um, a lot of unbelief is attached to past experience, what we haven't seen. So we'll see someone with a broken leg and we prayed and it didn't happen. And we see someone else with a broken leg and we want to go pray because it's the will of God and God's inside of us and he wants me. But we're, we're thinking, I, I mean, I didn't see the last one here. I mean, I'll pray, but I, haven't, I don't have a good record. And fasting will rip that out and communion with him because that's just a lie from hell. Really, it is. I've, <clears throat> I've prayed for way too many people who have passed away and are dead. Because I believe in raising the dead. Because in Matthew 10, 8, he says, heal the sick, raise the dead. Jesus raised the dead. The disciples raised the dead. So we're called to raise the dead. It's just that simple. We lose so much hope when someone dies, whether it's from sickness or they just, whatever. When they die, everyone's mourning they're lamenting and they're crying but it's like man why are we losing hope he said raise the dead let's raise the dead and it's not because i'm like oh you're being ignorant he's gone she's gone like just let it be she's in we come up with excuse and we say things if it's a christian they died of sickness we say well he's in a better place now he he wouldn't want to i've heard this so many times you know it's actually better he wouldn't want to come back i mean we'd actually do him a, a harm bringing him back into the world when he's in heaven the only issue is God told us to raise the dead. Heaven or hell, who cares? Raise the dead. God sent his son into the world to save the men in the world so men could look like Jesus in the world and more men could be saved. We don't need a huge list up in, we don't need a huge army in heaven right now. He'll come and he'll get his army. He doesn't need it now. He wants sons in God living in the earth to manifest his glory and bring more sons and daughters into the kingdom of God for that day. So let's stop cutting it short. Let's stop saying it's better that he's there now. No, it's not. He, Jesus paid a price for men on earth. It's amazing they're in heaven and I'm happy about it and I love it, guys. But don't let it be an excuse to not raise the dead, to not believe. But what I'm saying is I've prayed for way too many and haven't seen them raise up. And you know, the first couple, I remember... You know, after the, honestly, just after the third or fourth one, I was going to pray for one of them. I've lost, like I've lost which ones and everything, but I was going to pray for one. I just remember hearing these thoughts. I mean, <laughs> it's just the enemy and it's just, you're going to pray and you're there and you just want to believe the gospel. You just want to believe the dead can raise up because Jesus said so and he paid a high price and he loves this person. And uh, when you're praying, you'll just hear, I mean, you just hear the thoughts like, man, I just, are you kidding me? Do you really believe this thing? I mean, if you believed, you'd have seen him raise up by now. You've prayed for three or four. What are you doing? You know this doesn't work. What's going on? Like, you know this isn't actually going to happen. This is just a gig. You're just playing a game. You can't last long. You won't keep going. You won't pray for 10, 12. You won't keep going. You'll cut short because you haven't seen it happen. You'll just get discouraged and ask questions just like all the other Christians. Those are thoughts I've heard in my head when praying for the dead. Even for certain sick situations that I haven't seen move and then praying for the same thing. You'll hear those kinds of thought and it's just demonic. He's trying to stop you. He's trying to stop the mustard seed faith. And I know we liken the mustard seed to the size because it's small and you just need a little amount of faith. And I'm cool with that. But Jesus shares a parable about the mustard seed and that it's the smallest of all seeds in a garden. But when it grows, 
It's the biggest of all the garden trees and the birds of the air can come rest in it. So I see that. I'm 100% I'm for the little mustard seed, that's cool, but that's, I think there's more. I'm, I think it's talking about longevity. I think it's talking about being planted, being watered, and being grown up into a large tree for everyone to rest in. So he wants you to have mustard seed faith. He wants you to have faith that lasts. It may be small, but it lasts and it doesn't give up. It doesn't get scorched by the heat. It doesn't fall into the thorns. It falls into a good ground and receives 30, 60, and 100 fold. We want mustard seed faith. We want longevity. We want to take the watch off and we want to grow up into him and be mustard seed faith for the world. And so we can't get caught up in what we haven't seen. That, pr that place of fasting and prayer and communion with him will demolish unbelief in a very good way. And so the question is, is it, is it possible in my heart? I just, is it possible to see every man healed? Is it possible? Because the word reveals that it is. And you read through Acts, it talks about everyone being healed. You read through the New Testament, it talks about everyone being healed. It's possible, guys. We can see this thing happen. We can live a life with no unbelief. It's possible. It's just possible. He's saying, he talks about multiple places, have faith and don't doubt in your heart. He wouldn't say don't doubt in your heart if you were always going to doubt in your heart. If you were always going to have an ounce of unbelief. He wouldn't say you could be free from unbelief. He wouldn't say this kind comes out by prayer and fasting. It's possible to be free and live in faith. And we have to stop asking, well, how? How do I do that? What do I do? How do I do? Man, go after Jesus. Love Jesus. Get in the secret place. Go after the word. Reveal the will of God. Step out. Believe. If you don't see, you know what the will of God is. Keep praying. Keep contending. Keep standing. Don't give up. Faith never quits. Faith, literally, live or die, we have faith. That's the bottom line. We have faith. We need to stop talking ourselves out of faith by talking about how much we don't have it or how much unbelief we have. And we need to, well, I'll, you know, I'll hear this a lot. Well, I'll get there. It'll just take me some time. I need to just grow. I need to, and I understand seed time harvest. I understand growing up into him, but faith just instantly believes it's righteous. Faith, if I'm believing a lie and I haven't seen some things in my life and I know I need to grow in faith, this is what faith does. You know what, Father, I just thank you that I'm a son of God right now. I thank you that now I'm a child of the living God and that I'm in faith and that I've been totally made righteous. I know what I just did last night. I know what I did yesterday and it wasn't according to who I was. But I, Father, I, right now my heart's convicted. I didn't. I wish I wouldn't have done that, which reveals it's not who I am anymore. I thank you. You've changed my heart and that I'm in faith. I'm abounding. Yeah, I didn't see that sickness healed, but it's not who I am. That's not who you are. The will of God will be revealed through my life and I'll see the truth manifest and I'll see the word become flesh in my life. I promise you that by faith in my life right now, I'm going to believe this thing. I'm not getting moved by what I see and what I haven't seen. Father, I thank you. Jesus is king in my life. And that is faith. And then you live that moment from faith. Faith, repentance, you just repent in a moment and you live in faith. The just live by faith. Don't get caught up in all this stuff, guys. And let's just believe this thing. Matthew 17, it's just huge. It's one example, the only one in your New Testament Bible as to why when you pray and you don't see it happen, what's the deal? We don't have to read a bunch of books. The book's written. Matthew 17, verses 14 through 21. And I think it's in Mark 9 as well. Mark 9 is the short version. Matthew 17 is kind of the full thing. You get a good picture from both. I'd encourage you to read both of them. Um, but man, it's just, it's possible, guys. We can see the sick healed. We can be faithful and not faithless. Um, I know I've had a couple people ask me, um, you know, maybe they have some people in their family or they have some friends uh, and it's been a sickness for a long time. You know, how to deal with that, what to do. We want to draw in. I know a lot of you guys, you know, I'm not talking to people who don't want to believe. I'm talking to people who believe. So I'm not mad. I know I feel aggressive sometimes, but I'm trying to stir you up um, that this thing, it's just possible and it's simple. And I know it hasn't been simple and there's been questions, but let's just believe the truth um, and let truth define your experience instead of your experience define truth. Don't let thousand questions consume your mind when you have one answer. And I know people have asked, you know, when a sickness is just kind of in your face for so long, how do you deal with that? What do you do? Um, you know, I've prayed five times. I've prayed 500 times. When do I stop? When do I, what's the gauge? And I know we're getting kind of long here on the video, but, but a good barometer is, 
you know, I've, man, there's a lot of testimonies coming to my heart, but when it comes to praying for someone and maybe you're not seeing it move, um, I'll just share this short example. Me and my buddy went snowboarding just a, a little while ago and he tweaked his knee bad, hurt his knee really bad. Um, just tendons on the side of the kneecap. He felt like they were just ripped, they were just gone. Anyways, it was we were at the top of the mountain and skiing, he fell, this whole thing happened. He's in bad pain, couldn't speak, all this stuff. He stood up in so much pain, he passed out straight on the ground, just fell straight on his face, on the snow. So it was intense. And people were passing by, is he okay? And I'm like, yeah, he's fine, he's good. And because I'm thinking Jesus is just going to heal him. Like we don't need, we don't need an ER person to ski him down because then he'll get medically treated and checked out all the surgery and stuff and it'll be bad. And I just know Jesus is king. Guys, it's, a, it's so important to have good friends, good community, people who believe the same around you. That doesn't mean you need to live life in a bubble with only believers. You need to be around the world. You need to be around unbelievers. But it's important to have a sphere of people that believe like you do, that believe the gospel. Um, man, it's just so important. So we're up there and he passes out and he wakes up and he's like, what the heck just happened? What's going on? Man, this hurts like crazy. So I, I'm praying for him, praying for his knee, believing it'd be healed. Not much change. Um, maybe the pain subsided just a little bit. Um, but we're at the top of the mountain. I'm like, hey man, you're just gonna have to, like, you're gonna have to ski down. We're gonna have to believe this thing. You're gonna have to ski on your knee and Jesus is just going to have to heal you. It's going to be 10 times worse. We're just in faith. We're just going to believe it. We're just going to believe the gospel. And um, he's skiing. It's hurting. I can tell. And I probably prayed. <laughs> How many times did I pray? Probably close to 20 times. He'd ski a little. He'd stop. And I'd go lay my hands on his knee in Jesus' name. And then he'd ski. And then I'd pray, ski, pray all the way down the mountain. Because I'm not getting discouraged I know Jesus is king. I know Jesus wants to heal his knee. I know Jesus paid a price. I know the kingdom of heaven lives inside of me and I can release it into his knee. So we pray and we pray and we pray. And it's like 20 times. That's a lot of times. And if you don't, be honest, if you don't know him and know his word and really established in that truth, you won't pray 20 times. And if you do, it's because you're you're really struggling. And you're, all right, well, I guess we should pray again. Every time we pray, let's pray in Jesus' name every time in Jesus name because I was just believing the kingdom of heaven kingdom of heaven more 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 we're seeing this thing break because there's been times in the past I know this I've whether it's at Walmart or we're just out or whatever I'll pray for some people with hip knees backs whatever all kinds of amazing things have happened but I'll pray one time and it doesn't happen it doesn't seem to move they'll test it out oh yeah it's kind of still the same and if I feel grace on it it depends it totally depends where you are if you're uh, talking to a worker at Walmart, you kind of need to be quick because they're on the clock. If you're talking to someone who seems like they were on a walk or really busy or doing something, you, you want to be quick. You don't want to be there forever. You want to bless them, not not just like get them frustrated. But sometimes there's a grace to really just be with people and they don't really care. They don't have a place to be. And so when they're like, yeah, I don't really see a difference. I'm like, well, just give me your hand one more time in Jesus' name. And I'll just grab their hand and in Jesus' name be healed. I'll pray again. And it's just weird. It's sometimes it'll happen on the second time. Sometimes it'll happen on the fifth time. Um, but sometimes I just pray once. I don't see anything, but it's just something in my heart. I'm like, I believe this. It's like, it's going to happen. It's too late. The kingdom of heaven's flowing through you. Uh, I don't even need to see it right now. I know it's done. And it's just a barometer of your own heart and what you have faith for and what you're believing the Holy Spirit saying in the moment when you pray and you're like, man, I want to pray again. Not because you're in unbelief, just because like, there's something in you. It's like, man, let's get this thing. I'm, let's get this thing. But how, man, how many times I've prayed, I've prayed multiple times and it's happened on the fifth or sixth or even fourth or third, whatever. The fourth or third time that I've prayed, what if I would have like, what if I would have stopped and then never seen it happen? There's something about contending. There's something about standing and consistency that we need in the body of Christ. And for the individual we need friends that can come and lock arms and believe this thing and stand and, and not ask questions and stand on this word and know truth is truth and believe this thing so it's so important to have you know some good friends it reminds me i think it's in exodus 17 when when amalek comes against moses and the children of israel so moses draws away up into a high mountain 
with Moses, uh, I'm sorry, Moses, Aaron, and Hur. And Moses lifts his hand. Y'all remember the story, lifts his hand. And while he lifted his hands, Amalek was defeated. They were, they were getting defeated. But when his hands went down, because they got tired and weary, Amalek would prevail. And so what happens is Moses sat upon a stone. <laughs> There's so much revelation here. This is Old Testament faith. This is community of faith. This is what we need. Moses is in a high place, looking down on, looking down on the battle. He's having a heavenly perspective. His mind is in heaven in that sense. He has the things of Christ on his mind when he exalts his mind up high in a high place. He has two friends, her and Aaron, that come with him. And he, he, they get a stone and they sit Moses upon the stone. The stone is Christ, guys. Moses rests upon the stone. So the first step is to enter into rest. Amalek may be in war. You may be fighting against something spiritual. You may be fighting against... Rest upon the stone, which is Christ. And you rest there. And then by faith, Moses lifted his hands like this over Amalek, over the, over the war. And you know what his two friends did? Uh, Aaron and her is they grabbed his arms. Because Moses was growing weary. Many of us have grown weary in, in believing that we were going to be, that we were going to win, that we weren't going to be defeated, all this stuff, whatever it is. You can fill that into so many things, but it totally applies to, to using faith to receive something from the Lord. We don't want to grow weary. So we have friends that come up and hold our arms. And then, it, I mean, literally Amalek was defeated because of, of her and Aaron holding up Moses' arm as he rested on the stone. This is a great revelation of faith, is resting. And then by faith, lifting up your arms and then having a community of people that, that hold up your arms with you. They don't say, hey, I think you should do this or you should read this book or do this and do that. No, rest upon Christ and have your friends come alongside and lift up your arms and be consistent and be faithful with you. And you'll see Amalek destroyed. It says they were destroyed off the face of the earth. It's intense. And so let's stand and let's believe. Um, let's just believe, guys. If you've had something in your life and it hasn't moved, don't quit. Don't quit, guys. Faith doesn't quit. Get some friends. But hey, can, let's just agree. There's so many times when I lived out in Colorado, my ro I had a roommate, Spencer, and he's in, he's with our. He helped start. He helped us start the church here in our in our house. And uh, him and Aaron actually just had a baby four or five days ago amazing at home birth totally supernatural it was amazing i wish we could talk about that but me and spencer lived together and there would be times you know we would just get like hit with something um and we believed in divine health we believed in righteousness we don't need to get sick there's a covenant all that stuff um but we were tested in what we believe not by the lord uh anyway so that's a whole thing but we um something would come on us and We'd be individually just fellowship with the Lord, believing it's going to move. And there'd be a time we would just come together and be like, man, this is going on. I haven't seen it move yet. I'm not discouraged. I'm not in unbelief. But let's just agree right now. Let's let's grab hands. We would both be like going through something that whether it's just like runny nose or stuffy head or or whatever it was, we would literally got in Jesus. This is how our prayer was. We'd grab hands. I just remember it so many times in Jesus name. Father, we just thank you that we love you. We thank you that we get to agree and that you hear us. And if you hear us, we know that we have what we ask. Father, I thank you. We have friends that we can grab arms and just believe this thing. This thing isn't our Lord. It will not control us and it won't stay in our bodies. We bind it in the name of Jesus. Both of us right now as sons of God, we bind this thing right now in Jesus name. We command it to break and we thank you for faith. We thank you for fellowship. We thank you for your love in Jesus name. Amen. And we would see it instantly break off of our bodies, both of us. Remember there was one time my buddy, he was struggling with hemorrhoids and was it hemorrhoids? I think so. Something, it was definitely hemorrhoids. Yeah. And he was just fellowship with the Lord, just believing it was going to move. Wasn't, wasn't seeing it. He wasn't discouraged. He wasn't confused. He was just like, haven't seen this thing move. Hey, lock arms with me. Let's pray. 
came to me, we did that same thing, grabbed arms. And we're like, in Jesus name, this has to move. We thank you. It's our prayer is always wrapped in thankfulness, thanksgiving, and um, not in complaining and questions. It's thankfulness that 